Hello, my name is Jaden Chong. I am one of the senior teachers at Vincent Music. I'm giving this uh, video lesson from home. But today, um, I'm going to be talking about voice leading in piano. Um, and more specifically, with voice leading, I want to see um, how we grasp the concept of differing voices in piano. Now, for some of you this might be a first time concept, but in, in terms of voice leading, um, this refers to having different voices. Say, for instance, uh, um, a traditional format that we use is the SATB format, which is soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So, the highest voice being my soprano, I'm going to move that line. Now the alto. Tenor. Introduction of the bass here. the bass. Now, the reason why that is so important, particularly with piano voice leading, um, it's, I mean, the most, one of the more famous composers, Johann Sebastian Bach, used this to an absolute damn T. With Johann Sebastian Bach, he had what's called contrapuntal or multi-layered uh, kind of figures. Um, he was a specialist in what's called polyphonic music, or multiple part musics. So, um, I'm going to show you a fugue I've been learning, the fugue in D major from book one. So you see how multiple parts ended up kind of coming together here and there? I'll freely admit that wasn't a perfect rendition of, of it, I'm still learning the piece, but hopefully that makes clear the example that I use. Now, this concept, like, it's not an archaic one because it is something that is still used even in distinct kind of forms to this day. Now, uh, one of the pieces that one of my students has been doing is uh, one of the big ones from Interstellar. Um, now, I admittedly can't remember how the music goes, but one of the interesting parts about that... Now, the inter one of the interesting parts about this particular piece is that there's lots of arpeggio sections. Obviously, that's not an exact recreation. The reason why I bring this up in particular is because we have this kind of chord progression. Now, admittedly, un unfortunately, I don't have the music in front of me. But the reason why I bring this up in particular is because there's, there's a certain part in the song which is in one of the big climactic pieces. Uh, one of the cl big climactic sessions. And there's also a very big choral section that's there. Now that's obviously not really, um, an exact replication of that. But in reference with how we can use voicing, it's not necessarily multiple chords stacked together and here, hey presto. What it more refers to is how one can make a melody out of that. Now in the example that I showed before, even with this one just now, you can hear the melody. Otherwise, you can do it the other way around. There's a 
lot of myriad options that you can do with that. But going back to the beginning, with our kind of soprano, alto, tenor, um, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, it's kind of these basic four fundamentals. So, our basic four fundamentals are our bass, which is in our lowest register, or the, or the soprano, which is a higher register. Alto is the kind of uh, second to highest, tenor is the second to lowest. Now there's more technical terms in, on how one could use the kind of range, but I'm using that as a kind of framework for how I might, uh, for how I teach this. And it really depends on how you want to go about it. For instance, I wouldn't use the concept of like soprano alto tenor bass, SATB as it's more frequently called, for the lower sense of the piano, but more um, specific, specifically for arranging for voices. Now it's, as I said, it's a modern concept, but a few pieces where I can list some good examples are Debussy's, uh, Claude Debussy's um, uh, Dances of Delphi. Uh, now that is an interesting one because the melody is kind of in the middle aspect of the voices. So you can see that we have this melody of and the left hand is just kind of gently accompanying it. This is just one example of how voice leading, leading might be used, whether it's in a melody or otherwise arpeggiated sections. The reason why it's so important today is just because, you know, these days everyone is using like, in terms of a lot of modern composers and how they would use that, arpeggio seemed to be a really big thing. And also, having an understanding of voice leading, whether it's through a basic of this or otherwise learning some choral music, um, or even studying some choral music, that um, is something that I would highly recommend. Um, but for now, um, I'll just leave you with this, with this basic introduction of how voice leading will go. Thanks so much. Have a good night.